All right, my friend, today we tackle a very difficult exercise, in my opinion. It has been kind of tough to resolve, and frankly speaking, I don't know if I did the right job. So we're gonna face this problem together, <laughs> because I repeat to you, I'm just a random guy off the internet trying to resolve these exercises. I'm not a software engineer, I don't have a background in computer science. I'm just studying by myself and trying to understand how to code, right? Self-thought programmer, I don't know, maybe you can relate. So this time we have to write a function that converts the initial portion of the string pointed by str to int representation. str is in a specific base given as a second parameter. Except at the base rule, the function should work exactly like the atoy function. Okay, and then we have some constraints, for example, base is size one or minus, the base contains the same char twice, or the base contains plus, minus, or white spaces. All right. So we have two strings one for the number and one for the base this black box magic has to return the value of this specific string given this specific base basically this exercise builds up from this put number base and takes something even from the atoy so here i don't quite understand Back to the base rule, the function should work exactly like the atoy. Maybe we get some inputs like that. Maybe we get some strange strings which have spaces and plus and minuses as an input, and we should nonetheless resolve this riddle. Mm, I think this is the case, but let's jump into the code and let's try to decipher step by step this problem. So here we are. This is the code. This is probably the most complex problem solved till now, in my opinion because it contains a lot of uh, points. Look at that, I wrote like 273 lines. I have a lot of comments, of course, just to make crystal clear what I'm doing, but nonetheless, it's a, it's a longish program. As you can see, I have six prototypes, namely I use six functions to get to the bottom of this problem. And uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to run this program and check how it works. Then we're gonna decipher all the, um, the components of this program. Let's just watch very briefly the main so we can understand better what is going on. As you can see, I have a char star base, a string named base and a string named MBR. Then I have uh, an integer result so that you will see. So the number string is the, the first argument in my argument vector. Don't worry if you don't understand this point, it's just the command line arguments. This is the first argument and the base is the second argument in the command line. You will see very soon how it works. But I could have written here like this number, which is 101010 in binary, namely is the number 42. And this is the base, okay? I wrote in this fashion, so it's gonna be very easy to change my test. Then I stock the result of the, the toy function inside the variable result because as you saw before, the, um, the atoy function has to return the converted integer, right? The function has to decipher uh, given a specific base, which is the value of the specific number, okay? Given as a string. So I stock here the result, and then I have some conditional statements. I have if no match, no match, what is that? It is a flag variable, namely a global variable that I use initially zero. It will be turned on if uh, there is no match. You will understand what it means, but by now just keep in mind that I have two flags, which are two global variables that will turn on just in case, for example, if no match is the symbols in the base don't match the sample number. Namely, I have some unmatched symbols inside my base. Invalid base, on the contrary, is this case I see here. You see, an invalid argument, the function should return zero. Invalid argument is when base is empty or size one, when base contains the same char twice, or base contains plus minus or white spaces. This part is the invalid base, so it's gonna print invalid base, so you will see very soon. Otherwise, you print the output, namely you print the value of the specific number in a given base, all right? So this is just to give you a rough idea how the main function is gonna work. All right, let's compile the code and then we are gonna launch with the first input 2a, 
namely minus 2a. This is an hexadecimal number. And this is the base. I recall to you that every argument given uh, in the command line is a string. So this is a string and this is a string. The quotes are not necessary. They are just redundant, verbose to make it super clear that this is a string. All right, I have this number and this base. Let's launch the code. You see, I have as an output, the real value of minus 2a is minus 42, indeed. 2a in hexadecimal is 42, minus 2a is minus 42. If I have 2a, I get plus 42, or only 42, of course. If I have ff, I get 255, correct? If here I have, I don't know, zero, what do I get? I get the value zero, right? If here I have the number cafe, which is an hexadecimal number, I get this number, which is correct, I know, because I recall my by memory this stupid number, these stupid things I remember very well, <laughs> I don't know why. As well as I say minus cafe, what do I get? I get the minus number. All right, it seems like the function is working. Now I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna put, for example, JK. These symbols are not recognized by the base. So what do I get? The symbol, the symbols in the base don't match the sample number. Indeed, the symbols in my base don't match these two symbols. So I recognize the symbols. The same problem happens when, for example, I have uh, two times uh, the same uh, the same symbol. For example, here I have two threes at the bottom. So what is going to happen? An invalid base. Of course, I have twice the same char. I'm going to stumble upon this case here. You see, or I have a base with the plus doesn't work with the minus not going to work. Other example is when I have um, a space in between. For example, you see here I have a space. OK. Again, I have an invalid base. This time I have to use the quotes, otherwise it's gonna get these two as two different inputs. This is just the way uh, the shell works, so it's not gonna work properly. So I get all the cases nailed, right? When I have a double char, when I have a space, a plus or minuses, or I have only one symbol inside my um, base, okay? Cool, all these cases are covered. Now we can make some other tests. We can try in uh, um, base 16 to write um, the biggest positive number in an integer data type, which is going to be in hexadecimal 7f, f, 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 f. Okay, boom. So as you can see, this is the biggest positive number. Now, if we try to write it negative, that's gonna work as well. All right, so now we're gonna try to launch with this number, which is in hexadecimal, the biggest number, the biggest positive integer representable, plus one, namely it will overflow. What is going to happen? Boom. Well, I'm gonna get the biggest negative number, of course, for the concept of overflowing. If you're confused now, I'm gonna link a video in which I explain this concept. That's not our problem because this function has to handle only integers type. So if I say, for example, minus this number, it is going to work. It is going to work till now. This boils down to modularity of numbers. So you should understand pretty well by now how it works. Anyway, for our purposes, this function seem to work for every number. For one, it's going to work. 2a is going to give me back 42. ff is going to work. Now we change the base in a binary base this time. FF is not going to work because the symbols in the base don't match the sample number, of course. Here, if I say 101010, I get 42. Pretty cool. If I get 1010, 10, I get 10. Cool. If I get 10, I get 2. You get the point, right? If I have 1, I get 1. If I have 0, 1, I get 1. If I have only 0, I get 0. If I have, for example, one full byte, well, 255, of course. If I add another byte, what do I get? Of course, I get 65,535. Okay, it seems like the function is working properly, even with negative numbers, as you can see. Of course, this is not a choose complement algorithm. It's just appending a minus when it stumble upon. All right, let's watch how, and of course, and of course, this function is able to work with uh, whichever base number we want. For example, here I can have the number semicolon point, semicolon point, semicolon point. And then I give point to the value zero, semicolon the value one. Which number is gonna be my friend? Think carefully, you know this number. This is a binary 
base with two strange symbols, right? Boom, it's gonna get 42. Of course, because the semicolon has the value one and this point has the value zero. It is like writing zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. That's the same. These two are two parallel encodings. They only use different symbols, you see? The value is the same. All right, let's jump into the code and let's try to decipher this kind of complicated code. All right, as you saw before, I have two flags at the top, then some prototypes, which by now we don't care. And then we have our main that you saw, right? We get two inputs coming from the shell, and then we stock the result here. And then we simply watch, hey, the flag no match is turned on. In that case, you print this. The invalid base is turned on. You understand the point, okay? Let's jump into the code. This is the ftatoy base function, which seems very long, but it is not. As you can see, I have plenty of comments. So we're gonna go block by block, okay? As usual, divide and conquer approach. We're gonna divide this problem into conceptual chunks that we are able to manage. I declare immediately four integer variables. I have a base value, a position, a final, and a sign. Sign is the sign of the, of the value, namely, you will understand later, but by now just keep in mind that I have initially a plus one. I assume that the value initially is positive, okay? The base value initially is zero. The base value is the number of symbols. For example, if I have this base with all the value ranging from zero to F, I have to count all the symbols and then I have base value 16, of course. So the number of symbols is the base value, a binary system, a binary base F01. So two symbols, a base value two. Position by now is kind of cryptic, so you will understand uh, later. Basically, it's the position of the digit when I will call my recursive function. Yeah, well, we, we will use recursion in this video, so brace yourself. Then I do my controls. I have while the string base, a position base value, which initially is zero, right? What do you do? Well, you just search for the plus, the minus, or space, okay? And you say, if you stumble upon some of these charts, what do you do? You turn on the flag invalid base and then you just return. For us, the work is finished because I have an invalid base. Look at that. This is this point, you see? If you don't stumble upon these charts, what do you do? You increase the base value. Basically, you are looping char by char inside my string base, searching for potential invalid charts and counting all the symbols. That's what this loop is doing, okay? This is super easy, I guess. So we make this control. Then we go here. We simply say, if base value is minor than two, well, again, invalid base, this point here, okay? I counted all the symbol with this loop. And if I have one or zero symbols, well, again, invalid base, I turn on my flag here. And for me, we can return nothing to do anymore. So return zero, of course, the zero is the return value they want in case we have some invalid inputs. Cool. Then I have if twice char, this is an ad hoc function that I've made to check if inside my base I have a double char. We will see it later, but you perfectly know by now how it works because we did it in a previous video. Basically is this function. We use a nested while loop, which is very similar to the print combination exercise in the first chapter of the PC. So as long as we are concerned, this function is going to return one if it's going to find a double char or zero if it's not going to find. So we can read this point. Hey, is there inside the base a double char? Because if it is just invalid base is equal to one and then you just return zero. We finished. So you see what's happening with these three blocks. We are making all the checks, these checks here. Okay. And at the same time, we are counting the base value, namely, namely how many symbols are inside the base. This is an important concept. This base value is uh, mandatory to finish this program. Okay, we did all the mandatory stuff. Then what do we do? I want to find uh, the so-called position. Do you remember the variable we have here, which initially is zero? For example, we have the binary value 101010, or we have the, the hexadecimal value FF or we have cafe baby, which is an hexadecimal number. All of them have a specific magnitude, okay? For example, this first binary number has six digits. This one has two digits. This one has 10 digits. I want to know this data. It is important, you will see. So what do I do? I 
the reference my number which is called str plus position which initially is zero so here i have the first char of my string then I just keep all the strange plus and minuses and spaces. For example, if we have this strange string, like in uh, the Atoy exercise, you recall, we have this strange string. So I just keep all the plus, all the minuses. I keep track of all the minuses. And if I have an odd number of minuses, the sign of the return value is going to be negative, like in mathematics. So I keep track with this sign per equal minus one. So it's going to toggle. If I have only one minus, minus one. If I have another minus one, plus one. Minus one, plus one. Minus one, plus one. You see? Cool. And then I just keep going on. I increase the string pointer. So this while loop. Until I have a plus or a minus or a space. This is a function that I wrote that you know very well. No need to explain to you. What do you do? Keep track of all the minuses and just increase the pointer. We will reach this point, right? We will reach this one, and this while is gonna decay. Then what do I do? I say, if a special function, which is this one, symbol set, as an input, I give the char in our position, which in our case is the number one, namely the char one, and then I give the base, all the symbols that we have in our base. So here I say, dear special function symbol set, take the char and the base, please check if the char is inside the base. Let's check the symbol set function. You see, the symbol set function is gonna take a char and the base, namely a string with symbols. And it's gonna do its control. It's gonna say, while the char is not equal to the char pointed by the pointer symbols, what do you do? You increase the symbol. So basically you are searching inside the base char by char if there is a match. And this, of course, is end symbol for, say, A. The string is not ended, is not terminated. If, uh, you see, if not, if not uh, symbols, namely, if we are at the backslash zero final, what does it mean? Well, you return zero. It seems, it means that in this while loop, we didn't manage to stumble upon a match. We don't have, we don't have a match, essentially. We don't have a char that is inside my base symbols. So what do you do? You return zero. It means, hey, we don't have this symbol inside our base. On the contrary, it means, yeah, we stumbled upon one of the symbols. Okay, I think, again, this is a super easy function for you at this level of the PC. So here we are. I have the function here. It's going to check, hey, the char pointed by str, namely in, the, in our case, this one, is inside my base. If this is false, namely, there is not a match, I'm going to invert this zero so I'm going to enter this if I'm going to say no match, you see, one equal one. I'm going to turn on my flag and for me, it's finished. We can go, go home <laughs> because there is not a symbol in my base. Cool. So basically, if we, if we don't enter this block, we keep going on with the position variable. We are going to increase it and we're going to increase it until we have a string. You see, until I have a string, we keep going on. So this position uh, variable is going to count all the symbols it stumbled upon. For example, for this number, it's going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. For this number, it's going to count 6. For this, it's going to count 2. And for this, it's going to count 10. So I have my position variable that has the number of digits of the number itself, okay, in a specific base. Then we are ready to start, my friend. We are ready to start with the real function, which is this one. Real value. This is kind of tricky. This is a function that takes the number, which is called str, the base, namely the first input in the command line and the second one. Then it's going to take the base value, namely how many, how many symbols are in the base. Then it's going to take, attention here, position minus one, namely if position was, I don't know, for this number, six we give as an input five if it was this number we give as an input one and for this we give as an input nine you will understand uh, very well this position variable okay and here we have the sign the sign is a variable that has been taken care of by this while loop you see it depends on how many minus signs we have inside our base cool we're ready to start we have this function that takes this five input and this function will be able to to give us back the the real number here it comes this is the, um, the real exercise in my opinion so we're gonna try to understand very well this function i use 
Records in here, so it's crucial that you understand how it works. I made a video for my nephew, he understood everything. So, this is the highest form of reward. This is the highest form of okay, you, you got a good video <laughs> because I tried to explain to a kid this concept, which, in my opinion, is very complicated. But by now, reframed in the way. I've done, for me, it has become kind of easy to write recursion like that. You see this line, which is crazy. You have a um, recursion, which is cryptic. For me, it would have been impossible without a good mental model on how to understand recursion. So in this video, we're gonna, I'm gonna explain to you again this function exactly as I would to my nephew, 10 years old, okay? So basically this video is for my nephew. I think that if you can explain a difficult concept to a kid or to your grandma, this is the hallmark of comprehension. So I highly suggest you to watch my video so you can understand the bullshit I'm telling you now, okay? So my friend, let's try to understand uh, very well this mysterious function. I have as an input, of course, my number, which is a string, namely the first input in my command line. And then I have my symbols. For example, I have the number cafe baby, which is an hexadecimal number. And then I have my symbols for this hexadecimal base. All right, then I have my base value, which is of course 16. Why? Well, because I have 16 symbols here. I've counted all of them before, you saw that. Then I have my mysterious position variable. What is doing this position variable? Let's look at this number, cafe baby. This position, if you recall, is uh, nine, right? Because here I have 10 for my position, but I give as an input position minus one. Giving this nine, what I'm doing, I give this nine as a position because I want to exploit this number for my recursion that you will see immediately. Basically, I have the char in position nine, which for me is in position nine, I will exploit in this fashion. And I have the char e, which is the least significant symbol for this specific number, which is in position zero, okay? Namely, I should have reversed this so we can start from zero, but anyway, you get the point. So knowing how many symbols are in the number is crucial to resolve this algorithm because I need to know that this number is in this specific position because you know that numbers are positional, right? Every position has a specific power value. In this case, we have one for this position. Here we have 16, then we have uh, 16 per 16, then we have 16 per 16 per 16. I don't recall the exact numbers, but you get the point. Every level, every position has a specific power. So we need to know. Let's start the function so you can understand better this point. We have all these elements. We have the sign, we have the position, the base value, and everything. I think that this piece of code is kind of complicated. So we're going to read in isolation. This is another function which has only this algorithm. Well, I have the same main, essentially. I take inputs from the command line and then I just have the same real value function with all the same inputs. If you fancy, you can watch it on my GitHub, of course, so you can put your hands on this code. All right, let's pretend I have as an input the number cafe, only cafe this time. So I have an hexadecimal base, which is this one, base value of course is 16 and the digit position i use this time digit position is three right because we get four which is the number of digits minus one so we have three two one zero i need the position so i can exploit in my recursion then we start with the recursion magic i declare an integer i then i have my base case so we are not going to watch by now because digit position is not equal to zero initially, but it's equal to three. We start from three, so from the chart C. And then we have the recursive case. Into the recursive case, I say, while at the number, what is the number for the first function? Well, it's going to be the letter C, right? Of cafe. It's different from the symbols I have in position I. The symbols, where are the symbols? Are these ones. So until c is different from in the first case zero because it's the first one pointed what do you do you increase i so i realized that this is super complicated to explain so i made an explain like i'm five this code so here we are we're gonna explain this super complicated function with the help of naruto of course i'm gonna follow the theme of my recursion video so it's gonna be super easy for you 
So we have our number, in this case is the number cafe, which is a number in hexadecimal. The first non root is gonna say, okay, digit position is equal to zero. No, it is not. So I'm not the base case Naruto. So I'm gonna enter the else block. I have a while loop that you will see later. And then I'm gonna call again himself. As you can see, I have the function that is calling itself with number plus one and with digit position minus one. So I have a pointer arithmetic. I'm gonna increase number plus one and I'm gonna decrease the position by one. Look carefully now, you see? I have another function now that has this time digit position two and number plus one. You see? This time the number is pointing to the A and the digit position is two. Perfect. Naruto again is gonna watch, hey, am I the last clone? No, I'm not. So, so this clone this time has one position less, namely two, and has moved inside the number one position more, namely with number plus one. Very easy. It's gonna check, hey, am I the last clone? Namely, I'm the one in position zero. No, I'm not. So I'm gonna call myself again. I'm gonna clone myself. Boom. It's gonna do that with one position less and it's gonna move on in our number, in our string. You, you get the point. Then again, it's gonna check, hey, am I the last? Nope, I'm not the last. So, so it's gonna clone for the last time. You see? Finally, he reached position zero, namely where we have the char e, right? The last char of my string, of my number. Cool. Now what this base Naruto has to do? Well, it's gonna say while at number is different from at symbol plus i. Namely, what he's gonna do? Look carefully now. He's gonna say while at number that for this Naruto, for this Naruto base case is the letter e, you see? And then he's gonna say, while this e is different from at symbols plus i, namely look at symbols plus i, what is that? Well, it's the base. What he's gonna do? He's gonna increase i, okay? So as you can see, in the first case, e is different from zero. Yeah, of course it is. So we go on, we increase i. e is different from one, we go on. From two, we go on. From three, we go on. From four, then we go on, boom. We reach a point by which we stumble upon the letter e. And and i is equal to 14. What is this 14? Well, my friend, this 14 is the value of, of the letter e, you see? So with the while loop, the base case Naruto is just searching the value for its symbol. It's searching for the value of e. And it's gonna get 14, of course. Then what's he, what he's gonna do? He's gonna return i, which is 14, per sign. In our case, it's positive, so per plus one, it is an influential. So it's gonna return 14, look at that. It's gonna return 14, boom, to the previous Naruto, which was waiting for him, right? The previous Naruto, what, what he has to do? Well, the same thing. He already counted his, um, how much is the value i, but nonetheless, we're gonna do it again. So he's gonna count while at number is different from at symbol plus i. What are you gonna do? The same thing, my friend. It's gonna check for one, for two, and then eventually we'll stumble in f. So we have, its specific symbol, which has the value 15. Magnificent. But in this case, in this specific case, we are not in position zero. What does it mean? Well, we have to take count of the base value. As you can see, I have i per power base value digit position. What is base value? Base value is 16. Digit position is one, right? This Naruto is in the first position. So it's gonna return 15 per 16 elevated by one is 16. So 15 per 16, cool. So we have 14 plus 15 per 16. How much is that? It's 254, cool. We go to the previous Naruto. This is a recursion, my friend. What's happening here? We have 254 plus 10 because A has the value 10, right? In my hexadecimal. So the previous Naruto is gonna return 10 per 256. This time we have 16 per 16 because we are in position two. Cool, boom. The result is 2814. This time we have to add this number to 12. What is 12? Well, it is C, right? In hexadecimal, C equals 12 per 4096, which is 16 per 16 per 16, namely 16 elevated to three. What is three is the position of this number, okay? What do we have? Well, we have 51,966. What is this number, my friend? Well, of course, it's the value of the symbols 
cafe in hexadecimal. All right, this is an explain me like M5 of this function. I really don't know how to do it better. You have to nail down recursion super well. As you can see here, I have uh, the base case Naruto. I explain you like that because I made an entire video talking in this fashion. And if you watch that, it's gonna be vanilla easy this recursion. Believe me, I was so bad in recursion. Now I only think with recursion. When I have a problem, I always ponder, hey, maybe there is a recursive function which is better for this. Because with recursion, you can collapse problems in few lines. Like in this case, if you watch carefully, it, it's just few lines. You may perceive this problem as a very big problem. It's just few lines. Okay, here I have a very long recursion, which can be super cryptic if you're not um, very practical with recursion, but it is not. If I can do it, you can, I'm sure, my friend. So here I have the base case Naruto, which is gonna return for the first time the number 14, because it's gonna return this E in our specific case. And here we have all the others Naruto, but as you know from my video, we are speaking only with the second last Naruto here, namely with Naruto, which is in the first position. As you can see here, I have all my base powers, which are 1, 16, 256, 4096. These are powers of 16, but this is gonna be base dependent, right? So I have I per the power of the base value per position, in this case, is gonna be 16 per one because we are at the first position. I is gonna be the value of the specific letter. In this case, it's gonna be 15 because we have the letter F and that's it. And then we have the sign. Of course, if we have negative numbers, we are gonna make an addition of negative numbers. This per sign is gonna, every time, declare which kind of addition we are gonna do. Addition of positive numbers or addition of negative numbers. That's it. So if we have addition of positive, we go on one side. If we have addition of negative numbers, we go on the other side. Very simple. I think that's not super complicated, this function. I really don't know how to explain it better. That's the point. Maybe spend a little bit of time, but that's not overly complicated. Well, that's it, my friend. That's it. This is the meat of the, of the exercise. So every time you plug in, for example, um, you saw before, every time you plug in a, a number, for example, this one in base 2 is going to give you back 2, all right? 0 is going to be 0, um, minus 2, you see? And so on. It is like the way it works, but you can insert whichever base you want as long as you don't have double numbers and so forth. Cool. So now, allegedly, you understand how this recursion works. Here we have just the previous function, which is symbol set. It's going to search if the char is in the, in the symbol set. You saw before. The power function, my friend, super easy. Here I have a recursive power function, but you can do even iteratively. It's going to be super easy. I don't have to explain to you. Super simple. This is a function that's going to search for double char. Even that is super easy for you. No explanation needed. And at the end, we have the space function that you know very well at this level. Just search man3 space if you want further details. So that's it. I have this function, which are helpers of the real function, which is this one. This is recursive magic you saw with Naruto. I think with that mental model is kind of even silly, even silly. You can really write recursion like that. And this is just a function that is going to make preliminary stuff. Okay. So again, we're going to launch our uh, toy base. As you can see, it's giving me back 42. If I have a double here, it's not going to work. If I have a plus, not going to work. If I have a space, not going to work. If I have minus, not going to work. <laughs> if I have an unrecognized symbol inside my number, it's not going to work. Again, for every other case, it is going to work. We make this time hexadecimal number and we make the biggest positive, which is 7F, F, 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 F. Okay. This is the biggest positive. I can do it even negative. Okay. Just by plugging a minus. This function is tailored uh, to handle more minuses and more plus. Any other spaces here is going to just keep all of them and basically do the same thing as the Atoy. And another important thing, let's have the biggest negative, which is this one biggest negative i do minus this and you see it's working 2 billion 147 48 36 48 which is the biggest negative that's perfect um 
if I increase this number, probably not gonna work properly, but I don't care because the function is not telling me to handle numbers bigger than integer type, okay? It's gonna return me an integer. So allegedly <laughs> this is correct, but I don't know. I don't have the Moolinet with me. Sorry if I explained this function not very well, but at a certain point, it is kind of difficult to transmit information because you have to understand by yourself. Coding is like a lonely profession, if you want. Uh, when we talk about comprehension of things, they have to click inside you. They have to click like recursion. I can watch billions of videos, but eventually I learned by myself with a gimmick. Of course, my video is kind of a super gimmick to write recursion, but that's the way it is. All right, my friends. Enjoy. <laughs>